All right then gang, so now we have TypeScript installed on our computer, we can go ahead and create some TypeScript and compile it down into JavaScript. But before we do that, I just want to get you up to speed with where I am with the whole setup of this little project we're going to create. So I've already opened up VS Code and created a folder called TypeScript Tutorial. Inside that, there's three files right here, index.html, sandbox.js, which is empty at the minute, and also styles.css. Now, I've already written the HTML and the CSS because this is not an HTML course or CSS. I don't want to write this out from scratch and waste your time, but you can grab this template from my GitHub repo right here, the TypeScript tutorial repo. The link is going to be down below to this page and you can grab the index from here and the styles from here. So you can just go in and copy and paste them into your local files. But I will quickly go over them just to show you what we've done. This is the template for the mini project that we saw in the last video that we're going to create throughout this series. So it starts off with a head, a couple of meta tags, then a title, then we link to a style sheet called styles.css over here, which we'll see in a second. Then we have a div with a class of wrapper, an h1, and down here we have a ul with a class of item list. Now this is where all of those dynamic items are going to be output, those payments and invoices, and we're going to use TypeScript to do that later on. But Below that we have a footer and inside the footer we have a form. This is the form we're going to be using to add new items to this list ultimately. Now inside this form we have several different fields. The first one is the type, so is this an invoice or a payment? The second one is either who this is from or to. Uh, the third one is the details, so what is this invoice or payment for? And the fourth one is the amount that this invoice or payment is for as well. Then we have a button to submit the form. Finally, we have this little link at the bottom, which is linking to possibly one of the best websites on the internet. And then we have a script tag linking to sandbox.js. Now we'll come to that in a second, but first of all, styles.css is over here as well. This is the thing that is styling up the web page. Now I'm not going to go through all this and bore you because like I say, I think you should probably already know a little bit of CSS. If you don't, we've got a whole series on it right here on YouTube, but you can peruse through that at your own leisure. Now then, if I want to preview this in a browser, then I've got a package installed called Live Server. So that's over here. And you can see this one right here. I've installed this package. You can do that by searching for Live Server up here and install it. And that allows us to spin up a local development server so we can preview our work in a browser. So all I have to do now I've got that package installed is open up an index file or rather an HTML file right click it and then go to open with live server. Then it should open up inside a browser for us. So there we go. That's what the project looks like so far. And we're going to add all kinds of interactivity to this as we go on through the series. But the first thing I want to do is go through the basics of TypeScript. Now we saw before we have this sandbox.js file, but we don't want to write JS. We want to write TypeScript. So let's create a new file for TypeScript. So I'm going to call it sandbox.ts. That is the extension for TypeScript files. Now in here, I can start to write my TypeScript. And like I said before, it's very, very similar to JavaScript. So I can do all of the same things in TypeScript that I could do in JavaScript. For example, I could say const, and then I'll give this variable a name, character, for example, and set it equal to a string. That's absolutely fine to do in TypeScript. It's the same as JavaScript. And I could then say console.log the character to log this to the console. Okay. And just like in JavaScript, I can also interact with the DOM using things like the query selector. So I could create another constant and call it inputs and set it equal to document.query selector. And we want to, in fact, query select all and we'll grab all of the input tags. So that will do exactly the same thing as in JavaScript. We can do this. It grabs all of the inputs from our index file over here. Now I think there's three of them, one, two, three, and we get a collection of those inputs stored right here. And if I wanted to, I could log those to the console. So console.log inputs. Now, if I save this and come over here and open up the console, then nothing is actually 
going to be logged to the console. And that's because we've written our code in TypeScript right here, but our index file over here is linking to the sandbox.js, the JavaScript file. So this isn't actually being loaded in the browser, but even if it was loaded in the browser, it wouldn't work because the browser doesn't understand TypeScript. So what we have to do is compile this down into JavaScript. Even though this looks exactly the same as JavaScript, it's not. It's a TypeScript file. It's TypeScript code. So we have to compile this down into a JavaScript file, this one right here, in order for it to be understood by the browser, because then index is linking to that JavaScript file and it should work. So how do we do this? How do we do this compilation from this file, TypeScript, into JavaScript? Well, all we need to do is open up a terminal. So I'm going to say terminal, new terminal. Make sure you're in the correct directory, the same directory as our sandbox files right here. And then we say TSC, that stands for TypeScript Compiler. And we can use this because we installed TypeScript in the last tutorial. That's what we did it for. And then we can say we want to convert or compile the sandbox.ts file into sandbox.js file, right? So we want to take this code and we want to compile it to JavaScript and output it into the JS file, this one right here. Now, when the output file is named the same as the input file, sandbox and sandbox, then we can just take off this last bit right here and TypeScript automatically compiles it to a file with the same name, but just with a JavaScript extension. And by the way, if this didn't exist, it doesn't matter. It will go ahead and create it for us. It doesn't have to be there to begin with. So if I press enter now, it's going to compile this and it's going to create that sandbox.js file for us. And this almost looks exactly the same. We can see we have two variables. We're not using const because remember, that is a slightly newer feature in JavaScript and it's not supported absolutely everywhere. So it makes this into an older version of JavaScript, which is fully supported everywhere. So we have these two variables and we have our console logs, almost exactly the same as this. Now, notice this, I've got two little errors right here and they're under the constant names. If I hover over these, it says that this character constant cannot redeclare block scoped variable character. So this is happening for these two variables because we've got two variables, one over here and one over here named exactly the same. If you closed this, that error goes away. So you don't need to worry about that error. It's just because we had both files open at the same time and it's seen some kind of conflict between those, but that doesn't matter because the browser is never loading up this TypeScript file, okay? so. Now we've compiled that, we have our code over here. If we then go over here to the browser, then we see those things logged to the console. So that's worked. And that's how simple it is, my friends, to compile TypeScript into JavaScript. Now, if I go over here, I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna do maybe a for each loop on these inputs, because remember, this is a collection of inputs. It's a node list and we have three items inside it. We can use for each on a node list, just like in JavaScript. So I could say inputs dot for each, and I'll do a callback, which takes each input. And inside I'll say console dot log that input. Okay, so it's gonna cycle through that collection. It's gonna take each input and it's gonna log that to the console each time around. So I've saved this, but remember, we still need to compile it down again. It doesn't automatically do that. So we need to now say again, TSC sandbox.ts to compile it down into the JavaScript file. And now we can see that loop right here, the for each loop. So now if I go to the browser again, we can see over here, we get those three input fields. Awesome. So at the minute, every time we make a change to this stuff over here, the sandbox.ts file, we have to manually or recompile it by saying tsc sandbox.ts. Now it would be nice if we could just run this once and then every time we make a change to this file and save it, it automatically compiles it down again into this file and we can do that. 
we can say TSC sandbox.ts space hyphen W, that stands for watch, and press enter. And that means that TypeScript now is going to watch this file, sandbox.ts, and every time we make a change and then save it, it's going to recompile that into this automatically so we don't have to run it again. So that's pretty nice. So what I'm going to do is just change this, for example, to a Luigi and press save. It's going to recompile it. We saw that right here. If there were any errors, it would tell us down here. And over here, we can see now Luigi. And if we go into the sandbox.js, we can see now we see the new value for this variable. So there we go, my friends. That is how we compile TypeScript down into JavaScript. So now we know how to do that. Let's get started on the different types that we can use in TypeScript.